Hey guys, I'm Wednesday, and today is Friday, March 28th, and this is episode 6 of Just Keep Spinning. Um, so, I'm doing this in the middle of the night. I know I try to usually upload these on Thursdays. Kind of. It's still very new, so I don't really have like a running pattern. But it was my goal to upload these on Thursdays. I just have an easier time recording these in the middle of the night, so that's that. Um, this week I've done a little bit of spinning and a little bit of crocheting. I haven't done any knitting at all, so there's nothing on the knitting needles except that annoyingly eternal scarf. That's it. Um, I did, as far as spinning, I did make progress on the milk fiber that I've been working on from WC Merck in uh, Navasota. Um, so I, I can actually show you the first bobbin that I have done out of six. So it's very pretty. It's got, let's see if you can even see this, it's got pink tones, peaches, and this light lavender that's almost kind of a gray color. So it's very mellow, it's very like relaxing, warm, colored yarn. So this is bobbin number one. Um, I don't actually have enough bobbins to leave them all on the bobbin before I start plying them. So I'm not really sure if I'm going to finish the first one and then ply it and then use those bobbins to continue or if I'm going to spend all six at, at the first and then go into plying. Um, there's kind of pros and cons on each side of that. If I spin all six first, I have the benefit of making sure everything is closer in consistency. Um, however, I also have the disadvantage of it sits in a ball a little bit longer, so it loses a little bit of its twist. So when I go to ply it, I have a harder time judging whether or not the finished yarn is actually balanced or if it needs a little bit more twist just because it's been sitting on a bobbin that whole time. So I haven't really decided what I'm going to do yet, but I'm only on bobbin number two out of six, so I have a little bit of time to think about it. Um, it was eight ounces total, and initially I was going to make four skeins out of that. That's not quite how it ended up working out because when I went to go to buy and milk fiber is very, very silky, very flyaway, lightweight, kind of smooth, smooth kind of texture. So when I went to go unleash this massively long 8 ounce braid of milk fiber, one continuous braid of it, uh, of a half pound, it started kind of pulling apart. So I ended up having to go by weight and like amounts and that's just how I ended up stacking out as I had two of each that approximately match each other, piles of milk fiber. So three piles, two plies each. That's just how it ended up working out. So I am making progress on that slowly but surely. I was going for a light worsted weight. I don't know what it's really going to end up being. At this point, I'm just focusing on consistency. Um, it really has a mind of its own. It's not a difficult fiber by any means. If you get the chance to spin milk, absolutely go for it. It's a, it's a joy. But it really wants to do its own thing. So if you really wanted this one specific weight of fiber and you start spinning it, I mean of yarn, and you start spinning it and it's not wanting to do that, you kind of have to be a little bit flexible. That's just how it is with milk. I have the same experience with bamboo. Um, so yeah, a lot of fibers like that that are reconstituted from plant fibers. Um, and then I crocheted a little bit this week. You remember that hat that I was making for my friend that was based off of Bella's hat from Twilight and I gave the link a couple of times. Um, I tried doing it in double crochet instead of half double crochet to try and get a little bit more go out of it and I still didn't quite make it. It's better. It's no longer just a yarmulke, but it's, um, it's not enough. So I have two ways that I might go with this in the next one, two weeks probably. One option is to just try upgrading, like upsizing the size of crochet hook that I was using. I'm sorry, I keep, I'm talking like crap tonight, but you guys know what I'm talking about. Um, I can use a bigger crochet hook 
and see if that gets me the extra distance I need because I'm still not hurting non-density. I mean, this is still a, a non-see-through hat. It's a bulkier yarn than I guess the, the pattern was originally for. So I could absolutely do that without making it look silly. But if that doesn't buy me enough extra, then I may end up going ahead and spinning up some different alpaca and just incorporating it into the stripes, either the vertical stripes or these horizontal ones or doing some kind of added pattern to it just so that I can get a little bit more yarn and work it in in a way that's not uh, in, in an organized fashion. Like I don't want it to just be this alpaca up top and then a row of other alpaca on the bottom that's just that's gonna look weird so we'll figure it out I'll probably try a bigger hook first and see if I can make it happen that'll be full hat crocheting number three of the same yarn and it's holding up great so this is this is what I love about alpaca it just really it's a great fiber it's it's so much fun to spin it stays together so well, it's so strong, it holds on to itself, and it's warm as hell. So it's um, pretty cool. It's definitely a pleasure to crochet, so I don't mind doing it over and over again, as long as the hat comes out good in the end. So um, That's all I've done. I haven't done any other knitting. I haven't worked on my spindle at all, so kind of a brief little update so that's what's on the needles what's on the wheel what's on the hook what's on the spindle that's all that stuff so um i will include what links i can in the bottom but most of the stuff we've talked about already so there's not a whole lot extra to put down there but everything will be in the description so check that out subscribe i'll catch you next week okay bye